complexities turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Ah, oh, come on. Oh. Complexities Compl turn to ban. All right, welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls to the broadcast here, the Star Ladder I League Star Series. American qualifying action coming at you. Ten Digital seconds, Chaos versus seconds. Complexity Ten Gaming here in this two game series. And right now, DC, DC of course, up uh, one game to nothing in this series. Although, again, I got to say, I mean, Plexity definitely had hope there. They really had hope there in that first game. Uh, I was looking at that points that they couldn't start pulling through, but that bottom push, man, move went a little too deep on Timbersaw. And before you know it, uh, things aren't going too well. And then DC kind of just turned it on Five from there. So uh, remaining. I'm joined by Trouf, by the way. Trouf, uh, is there really much else to it uh, the, the, about that game? I just think some really DC, good setups for movement. You can hear me, by the way, right? I can hear you, and it looks like the stream should be able to. Okay, this should be good. Okay. DC's yeah. <laughs> Skype sucks. I'm just going to say that much. Um, yeah, no, I think Moon just had some not only fast reactions, uh, good item build, good setup. Uh, it was a little interesting to see the Helen the Dominator first, but uh, really the bread and butter of the hero was Blink RP, right? I mean, and that's what really happened. You use the Lotharis to help set up and maneuver yourself around so that they can't see you and they can't see it coming. That's why I thought the last fight in particular was, was a little peculiar because, I mean, they, they, they knew he was there because he was sitting there attacking a, a Morphling yeah. Replicate good, I want to say two seconds. Maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit longer, I don't remember. But they knew he was there and they just let it happen. Um, it's also, in general, that area, those little closed quarters, like, like around there, maybe around the other one, around Dyer's Sanctuary slash Shrine, whatever you want to call it. Or around Roshan, whatever it may be. Whenever there's close quarters, heroes like Darkseer and Magnus um, that have those the kind of AOE old things that suck you up. Um, that's where they really thrive, and they just probably shouldn't have taken a fight there to begin with. They were worried about Roshan being killed. They were worried about their shrine being killed, which would mean that they'd have more typical access to Roshan. So I understand the the urgency of protecting that shrine. It was just a very fortunate spot to be fighting. DC around that Magnus. Yeah. Five seconds. So Digital Five Chaos ultimately just making the better decisions, le leading them to victory. And Complexity here we are now in game two again, up one nothing. But Flexity definitely has fighted them, so we'll see how they do in this one here. And interesting start to this one. I say that because Leshrac, again, there's there's really one team I think that you can argue out there that Leshrac is a worthy ban against right now. And Complexity, Ten they've proven seconds. time and time Ten that they play it well. And uh, it was being the first game, if I'm not mistaken. So Five they're going to let it go through this time, though. They do go Underlord Shadow Demon in response, however. So it could be a problem for DC, letting uh, letting them have the Lush Rack. Um, D. I mean, they. I know that Cole loves to pick this Lush Rack. He's just picking it up for. I mean, the last time I remember casting them, I think it was with you, actually. We saw them pick up a Lush Rack really, really early. And I remember us saying like wow this is pretty bold um picking up a less track i think it was a five position how are they gonna seconds, they had no setup stuns or anything like that but they proved us wrong five and they actually took over that game remaining. and less track was a, a huge staple of their success in that game so Reserve i can't even i can't say right now at this point like oh man that's just not going to work out for them because they they seem to run it well and they seem to be comfortable with the hero um that being said they're I think a lot of teams have seen Complexity run Leshrac a bit more. Complexity um, come turn to ban. Pretty sure Melons will play this, right? Like, I mean, you could play it core, but I'm pretty sure Melons plays it for the, DC, the most. DC, um, yeah, I, they they thrown it around a little bit, but yeah, Melons is usually their Leshrac play. Okay. For DC, the bands to come. Timbersaw and Sand King taken away by D. You got Ten Rana, seconds, as minutes, well as Luna. Mm -hmm. To the court. They don't want to give up that Luna Shadow Five Demon yet again, remain. so they'll gladly uh, ban that option. Now, we saw Terror play last game when they happened to go to Shadow Demon, so I wonder if Digital Chaos may go that route now. Yeah. Uh, he's not. They very well could. Very well could. Rubik's actually not too bad against Terror Blade um, in the sense that his when they start to push and group up all those illusions, Fade Bolt does... Pretty good damage. It's been buffed by like 30 damage, I think. So now the max is 320. I think it used to be 280. 
And the damage reduction, I think, got buffed just a little bit as well. So in that sense, we're kind of good against... Um, but also, when you start to, like, verge onto a Terra Blade in the middle of a team fight, that lift, if you time it perfectly, it's not hard to. It's a very good way to stifle that, uh, that Sunder usage. Um, but then again, I mean, Shadow Demon, Terra Blade, very, very strong combo. You have the Underlord to kind of be frontliner for you, give you a mech, give you a pipe if you need one, which yeah. they will because they're up against Leshrac and Rubik. Yeah. We haven't even seen their three other picks. Oh yeah, pretty important item to have just against those two alone. They also go Invoker, so we're going to see a Wii Invoker most likely. The uh, middle lane here, and now Complexity, going to have to figure out how they maybe want to respond to that. But yeah, going with the really two supports with their first couple of picks, uh, that's what we expect at least. Now Leshrac again, as we pointed out, I mean it could potentially switch up uh, depending Ten how the game, the draft minute. finishes here, but figure off the bat they're looking to lead. Support option. So we still need a mid. I will say DC actually. Uh, I forget who it was against. It was earlier in this tournament. They actually ran Leshrac mid themselves. We actually played Leshrac. Um, it was against you know it's against NP. That's what it was. It was the first series. Okay. Them. And they pushed down towers like oh, crazy. Oh. But... Uh, okay. Real quickly. I I, yeah. I I got to hang out with Complexity. You know a bit at the Boston Major especially and just in general. Obviously I'm a fan of the team and the players on it and stuff. Um. Inside scoop, maybe. Uh, Monkeys was talking about how uh, he really likes Pudge, and he considers himself a very, very good Pudge player. Thinking okay. we're going to see five some Monkeys Pudge here. Remaining. That's my guess. Well, I called a morph last game, so let's see if you're right on this on this Monkeys Pudge. I, I agree with you. I think I think it probably is going to be off lane just because. Don't think I think. Melons is going to be on the Lesh track, and if that's a dual support of Rubik Lesh, where else would you put Pudge? I don't think it's going to go mid. Um, so offlane would make the most sense. I think they're going to go some kind of aggro duel, or sorry, aggro tri lane with like Pudge, Rubik, Leshrac. Maybe put Pudge up there, hide the Leshrac and Rubik supports on the side, smoke up or something, and go for a level one bloodlust. Sorry, level one uh, uh, first blood. And uh, so if that's the case, something like a Weaver come out for the safe lane, um, someone that can hold his own in that short in that short lane. Um, that that could also just be maybe their Maybe they won't do that. Maybe they'll just do dual lanes and have Rubik plus one. Complexity but just watch out for that. So Also, I think Weaver just is a hero in general. Uh, that being said, there is a Kunkka. I was almost going to mention the fact that, oh, they banned out the Marana for the Shadow Demon. Now we got Kunkka to watch out for, and they did pick the Kunkka. So yeah. picking the page out of, I think it was Infamous's book? Ten seconds. Uh, remaining. Was it Infamous or Dial Who did that Com? earlier today? One of those two teams, yeah. Five get who of uh, the two, but in that earlier series. like, oh, they're both Peruvian. <laughs> no, no. Reserve time. I'm joking. Okay, so yeah, they do get the cut. Obviously, that, that combination has been around for a while. It died off for a fair amount there. Kunkka, in general, really hasn't been a popular hero, but again, we've seen some glimpses of it here and there. You know, you know a hero, that's, I don't know if it's going to fit this game necessarily, but again, watching some of the European action, Team Liquid specifically, they've been running a lot of Necro. Necro's kind of been a popular ah. hero this patch, yet we do not see Necro at all. So right here, I mean, yeah, it, maybe not here, but why not? You think? Well, um, only weary thing. Are you talking about for complexity? Uh, I, I'm not even guessing we're gonna use or just it in here. general. Just in general, yeah. Yeah, I got I, it. well, in, in general, I think Clinks, it's a very strong Clinks. hero. In terms of okay, Clink's a very good hero for the safe lane. In terms of, you can kind of leave him there. Want to go for some kind of aggro tri lane? It, it would be quite fine. Um, hey though, Underlord, that damage reduction, even with Clanks hitting with fiery arrows or searing arrows, is, I'm interested to see how that matchup Ten goes. I haven't seen it personally. I wonder if it's enough to Underlord hold his own, Five seconds or if the, the match or the damage from the uh, searing arrows is just too much. That'll be interesting for me. But back to your Necro point, yeah, it's a very strong hero. Uh, complexity, complexity could take it, but Underlord's most likely going to go for a pipe. It's going to mitigate. A lot of that damage. Um, you have the rum to, to work with. Um, yeah, we'll see. But yeah, it is a very strong hero for sure. Yeah. yeah I do find it interesting though. Again, he's, he's kind of feel. I feel like he's considered more of a just a pub dump hero in general. Uh, but like I said, Liquid has been using it lately and doing very well with it. I think Adfinum even used it a couple of days ago uh, in their debut series and they won their match with it. So maybe he gets more you know, attention. I'm. I don't know if I'm sold on the Pudge offlane thing. Maybe it will be 
as Monkey says, he is comfortable with it, but I feel like it sounds crazy, but I really feel like it might be stronger just to have like an offlaner here. They're actually banning out Abaddon, so I don't think that they that I think it's gonna be a less I think it could be a less rack mid actually, and Rubik like for melons and then Pudge uh for Z Freak. I know Z Freak also plays a mean Pudge. He's a very, very good oh, yeah. Pudge player. So I wouldn't be surprised to see this be some kind of offlane here, like maybe like Dark Seer. Dark Seer is good with Pudge. That's if they go the route of Pudge as a full lane towards. I think given the situation and given the draft, it might be a bit stronger. I think Misery agrees too, because that otherwise I don't know if that uh, the Abaddon ban makes much sense. Although I have seen Abaddon mid before. That was with the Chinese team a long time ago, and I think the old C deck used to do it. Very, very old with okay. um, what was this name? Inflame. Oh, that was like two years ago. I haven't seen it since. Yeah, this final pick really is going to be something here for complexity. It's hopefully going to give us a better idea. I mean, they're going to have to choose quickly now Five seconds what remain. they want. So here we go. Finish with. Okay. Oh, it is going to be off lane, Pudge. Okay, so Shadow Fiend mid. He was right, I was left. <laughs> I will. Now, they have ran a little bit of off lane Blesh Rack before as well. That, that was back when Moo was playing the off lane. I don't know if that's something that they would still potentially Ten do. Ten seconds but... remaining. Yeah. Remaining. Uh, monkeys on Pudge hmm. would have to be my guess, though. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, it makes them up now with an epic. There's the TB. All right. There's the TB. Very strong pairing with the Shadow Demon. And they got that fifth. They got the Luna fourth. Now they get another <laughs> right here with a Shadow Demon, this time even later in the draft, so... Let's see if it comes to bite complexity in the ass later, because it certainly did last game with that Luna pickup. It eventually did, yeah. To be fair, I mean, earlier on in the game, it seemed like that Timberdall pickup was working, and they were actually biting it off right. really well, but it eventually became overwhelming, as it naturally does. Now, again, I will say Leshrac, you know, he provides a good amount of AoE. You got the raises from Shadow Fiend. They have good counter push. But, uh, yeah, it, it feels like a Shadow Demon paired up with either Terra Blade or Luna, especially. It, it really is just so stupid strong. Not many teams are willing to give that up. Look to the is. Here we go. Let me... Oh, I gotta switch the, the HUD here. In the game now. All right, so, uh, it is... Is it... On? Yeah, it is Monkeys on the Pudge. So, I will say this, too. Now, again, with all that high P, he... Talking with him about it... Help sound like he's a pretty good punch player. He loves to play the hero. I'm just gotta live up to big it now, plays. right? Yeah, they, we, <laughs> he better live up to this now. I'm setting this up here. No pressure. Oh, not many. Every miss hook, I'm keeping a tally mark. I got my <laughs> notepad right here. Of course, of we course. Go. All yeah. right, every hook you missed, I'm, I'm keeping a tally. All right, we'll see if it starts with one here. We're gonna smoke on up. Try to get somebody. They they had a chance somewhat on Underlord, but it weren't didn't get there quick enough. And, Pulls back, so I think DC playing a pretty safe movie enter. We are gonna. Oh, they're gonna catch we. Yeah, this should be a kill. I don't see him getting away. A splitter catches. There's the hook, and there's the kill. He landed the hook. He's one for one. It's necessary there, but all right, he hasn't missed one yet. He's one for one. He is hook of his life. Well, that's a big first that's right though. That's gonna get them the rune. Now it's still gonna be a two-two rune split. Doxo will get this one. The battle I'm begins. curious why they placed the ward there for DC when you could just walk up a little bit and place it on the big cliff and it shows you so much more. Doesn't that seem a little odd to you? I, I feel like you could get True. so much more out of it. And if they're going to de-ward, they're probably going to place a de-ward somewhere around it anyways, you know? Well, it blocks the camp. I mean, that's the one. Oh, true. I assume, yeah, with the, with the offlane punch, he takes it, but he can pull the creep wave. Oh, of course. Okay, I'm so stupid. I haven't seen that as much, and it just, it's so, God, it's so useful, isn't it? So, <laughs> nope, no shenanigans for him. Oh, yeah, they're going to block. Obviously, they know that now. He's pinging it out like, damn it. Okay, they, they knew what was happening, so. Yeah, this, uh, all of a sudden, life just got a little bit more difficult for Pudge. But that's, you got to expect I, that when you're playing these top tier teams. I, uh, I'm interested to see what, what his plan is now, though, because he's not going to be, like, contesting this lane. He's not going to be doing weird holes. And the supports are helping the safe lane, so see how much, yeah, how effective he is. But for for now, they're doing some pulls on the side of DC. I think he actually tried to stack it, but he missed it. Boxer, that is. That's kind of unfortunate. 
Jesus is going to stay close enough to leech as much experience as he can, but obviously sucks now. <laughs> Being over here will uh, attempt to push him out as much as he can. Now, he knows that he doesn't have rot, actually. It's going to be fun. Right. Oh, he has level 2 now. Okay. So much for being fine. Metamorphosis, here we go. Is he dead? Yeah, he's dead. Plus, he <laughs> rots himself. Oh, no. Couldn't get it. So this is what I was talking about. So when you're when you're not investing, see, I, I, that's why I was like when I saw that sword, I was like, well, that's still yeah. I, I, I just assumed that they were gonna do some kind of aggro aggro lane with this. And if your if your whole strategy is I'm just gonna hook the creeps to the side, and then everything's gonna be you know all fine and dandy, and then that gets and you're stifled because of one ward, you yeah. gotta rethink your strategy or at least buy some sentries and be ready for that. Yeah. Because now he's got kind of no purpose. Although. They do TP him mid. There's a haste room picked up by Z Freak. B senses something, and he's going to be fine for the time being. As he gets caught somewhere else. Maybe a lucky hook. I don't know, but we with his Wii senses are just knowing that something's at misery, however. Yeah. Might not be so lucky. Still haste room active here for Z Freak, and that's a dead hunk of. No chance for him. Raze is going to be coming out. But it's going to kill for Shadow Fiend and cancel. Well, a little bit off with that raise, but that's the radius. Hits, uh, hits the Kunkka. And he'll secure the kill. So it makes it a two to one game now. Yeah, at least in Poker, it is a back, but still picking off a support. It's a good job with the roam, but I will continue to watch, see how Monkey's here on this punch does recover. They didn't actually spend any resources yet trying to counter ward this uh, ant block observer ward. So they, yeah, uh, don't really care about it too much in the end, it feels like. Denied. Denied. Nope. I wanted to see if. Uh... We're gonna go for another kill when this meta is up on the resolution. He didn't. I was expecting him to actually level up the reflection during that last initiation. But he didn't do it. He knew that the Kunkka was around. Which means he's gonna go for just like an all pushing, all farming build. Yeah, two, zero, two, two right now. So no points in the reflection. Um, and obviously that synergizes a bit better with the Shadow Demon and the disruption. Your illusions do more damage. Um, it's a little bit better. So we'll, we'll see. I mean, th this pushing is gonna be pretty scary. And Pudge. He's great in, in the towards the end game, which is when you have some core items and levels, like Aetherlands and things like that. But he, like I said, this is just going to be such a slow start for him. Yeah. We'll see. Close to level three now, at least. Yeah, he's in trouble, though. Things uh -oh. coming out. There's the combo. Don't think he's missing this torrent. Oh my god, he missed oh. the torrent. <laughs> How many times? People haven't been running this combo for a while, so they, they're missing the timings, man. <laughs> I don't. Uh. Yeah, that uh, that was a whip. Oh, he just walks away, so no kill there. It's getting a little lucky. We'll see about uh, <laughs> get it again, but it doesn't seem like they're gonna get another chance. Good one. Maybe. That. Now Ruby is coming up here to defend. Got a little bit. They may be sensing. Yeah, here's the push. Signified by. Oh, here we go. Second chance here, mystery, and he does hit it this time. Four TP's coming out. Look at the defense here from Rubik, though. Cast the Fate Bolt. Little damage from the Illusion. Smellin's casting that Edict onto many, many units, but maybe looking for a stun opening. And they will defend this tower, and that's the important thing, Monkeys. Maybe looking for a hook. He's taking lots of auto tech him. Yeah. Oh. Careful. Missed the hook. Two for three. <laughs> You're really keeping track, aren't you? I got it. Almost got, got misery it. there, but uh, scratching his butt somewhat, and actually landing the hook in the end, so. And they'll just prevent this tower push from oh. happening. Bottom lane. Wait, where was it? That was middle lane. There we go. Yeah. Solo kill. Look at that. Cancel. Giving the solo kill. Using those raises level three currently. So. Missing uh, out on that one. But it just seems like he dove him at the tower essentially. Catching him. Big kill for Cancel. Seems like he's been outlasted in quite a bit in the middle lane too. But you got to think the roam for that. Oh, the courier. Uh, they're going to stop the courier. No, oh, it's not going to kill it. <laughs> <laughs> Chasing it the whole oh time. no, Soxa ran into a creep, which kind of slowed his movement a little bit. Soxa, a lot of trouble right now. Edict coming out as one dead Shadow Demon. And a Shadow Fiend, actually. A Shadow Fiend taken out by a solo kill from Wii, which is quite impressive, considering the fact that he was 0 and 2. Very impressive. Rubik, trying to go for a lift. Has a little bit of damage. No sentries, though, so we be fine so that, that's always more impressive when you get the kill later like when someone starts to snowball with one or two kills and then you kill them afterwards yeah. well I thought misery trying to juke and jive monkeys he's got the hook ready no TP available even if he had it and this looks like it's gonna be an easy kill there's easy he's like oh I want this bounty room real quickly okay fix it up there's the rot once again 
And that is history. Hopefully not the neutrals for their sake. Yeah, they do kill him before he gets there. Well played. Middle lane, we again could be in some trouble. Leshrak in the flank. The raises land. Here comes the Diabolic Edict. The Split Earth, he's going to dodge that at least, but with the Edict. No, he's not going to. He actually didn't even use the Edict in the end. Wow. Surprise that. Maybe it's just simply too far away. Figured it wasn't going to be enough. It Slightly slowers your minute and kind of stutters you. A little bit, he was more focused on actually getting this done. Okay. But unfortunately, we was just a little bit too fast. Was uh, I think he activated what, or like, I don't know, maybe eight more movement speed. But it was enough to give him a little bit of a dodge right there and sidestep. Cancel gets the last hit on the tower. And the last, they're, they're making more of this. They do lose the tower up, or they're about to lose the tower up top unless they do something. Um, yeah, this is going to die pretty fast with the glyph already being popped. Metamorphosis, the illusions, and Sia Tower. So, that complexity fine with the trade in the end. Inevitably going to happen as we were talking about. Underlord bottom lane. Find himself in a curious spot here as we see Rubik rotating over. Look at Moo, by the way, the triple Sage's mask. They have working into that Orchid. Come eventually, Moo Meander, he is dead. Well, Searing Arrows is straight activated, and obviously Rubik assistance. Easy kill onto the Underlord. Rubik's having a good game, very close to level 6 right now. Tons of fun spells to steal, obviously, the because uh, Arsenal of spells is really strong. Resolution in some trouble, no Sunder available. No more attacks. attacks don't do too much because he got high armor, but he does clip him at the very end with that final C raise. Easy kill, nice kill on the resolution there from Cancel. Yeah, that's a big one, too. Obviously, slowing down Terra Blade, and yeah, I got the net worth up now, and you see the top two in favor of complexity here. Now, Moon Meander. We run down, lift once again. You see Monkey's getting right on top. No dismember yet, but not even necessary. Monkey's getting credit for the kills, the hook in the face. He really wants to make sure to secure these kills. It's not fleshy by there. Of course, not ending up charges on that, but still. Just to get it in the kill. Eight to two lead here. When you look at the makeup of Complexity, this is a team that wants to kill early, and they're accomplishing that at eight minutes into the game right now. Kind of a similar start to their last game. Those Monkey's. See Soxa. No ulti, though, unfortunately, as he's only level four. Um, and he's just gonna get disrupted and Soxa will be fine for the moment. See if he's maybe trying to find some kind of opening here. Monkeys, can he get the rod tonight? Can he get the rod tonight? He can. I think he actually takes extra damage with the rod. He sits the shadow of the units. Um, Soul Catcher, spell. yeah. Freak. Yeah, Soul Catcher. Speaking of Soul Catcher, Zee Freak deals that. Tries to screw on out of there. I think he will be fine. Yeah, Moo is nearby, of course. Meanwhile, there's another kill happening elsewhere as it looks like at the top lane, he does take out Shadow Fiend. Over there, back to the bottom lane. No Sunstrike coming out. Oh, Seafree's going to dodge it. He was aware that something might have been happening. Does steal another base. Still a Firestorm, actually. Moo Meander in trouble to this punch. Decane are rotting him down right there. We'll secure the kill. Moo on that cling. Soxa, can he escape? No, he can't. The rod is too much, and Misery's also in trouble. He, too, goes down the hook and a whip, but that's because the target died right before he used it, so... In the end, works out for Complexity yet again. They got the three kills down here. They did lose Shadow Fiend at the top, but as we mentioned, he'll cancel Shadow Fiend. He'll be fine. Well, Monkeys is proving his worth this game in terms of that, that Pudge pick. And he is all over the map. Banned at the top, but he's found the openings mid. He's found openings around their, uh, their bottom shrine. He's just everywhere. They do get the tower kill up on him. No one will pay with his life for it. Doing a lot of good damage there to TP. Though. Doing <laughs> actually a lot of good damage to TP. Got the dangerously close. Does have Sunder now, but he actually used it, I think, over the top lane, which contributed to that double kill that we got. A Shrek and the Shadow Fiend. So despite that that bad start and that first blood onto the Weeha, uh, he's recovered very, very nicely and he's closing in on his Midas at a good time. Yeah. Uh, that was close right there. They were kind of rotating around, maybe catch the Terra Blade if he's trying to fall back, but they used the Shrine instead and we're going to go right into the bottom lane, of course. So. Soxa gonna put him under once again, create some more illusions here. You see Moo in the background. Oh, the Courier's here. Delivering that Ogre Club, he gets it in time. Oh, X. Mark the spot, gonna bring back Pudge. The Sun Strike on top, and Monkeys will fall in the end. Blinks deciding not to open. Just a little bit too dangerous of a spot. Instead, he'll use his Death Pact on the Centaur off to the side and continue to farm. So, they do enough to hold there. That ended up working out really well because the meta was only lasting for like another two more seconds after that engagement. Did not, if, had he not had that meta up there, I don't think he gets get that kill at all into that punch. There is an Uberlord ult coming up to the top. And a nice taxi service up to the top lane to help defend and farm. They do know that Leshrac's up here. I, he has to have known that that happened, right? He didn't look or see or care, care. care to give any notice to it. <laughs> or, or just care. I mean, he's, he's Leshrac, damn it. He's got that dab on oh. Malice missing, yeah. 
Apple wants to get it, but I can't get him. He's just too quick. A Shrek having a innate fast movement speed. In fact, they're gonna go smoke. We look for a kill monkeys. He's still not level six, so despite his great start, getting very, very, he's getting a uh, slow leveling. Pudge does get the hook very nicely done. And a quick stun here from Melvin. And there's his level six. Yeah, that was a blind hook. I was double checking. That was simply him uh, seeing him go there initially and hope that he was in the right spot. So definitely one of the better sort ones so far. Sort of blind. Yeah, he saw it initially, <laughs> but when he actually hit the hook, it was technically blind. Middle lane, they're trying to go for Wii, but obviously not going to happen. A little too safe, and uh, once again, he'll be fine. So you mentioned Wii. He does have the Hannah Midas now working on, on that Yules next. Takeoff game from the Evoker necessarily, but it's, it's obviously been a struggle as uh, he's been locked down somewhat. How's Terrible doing, by the way? Dragon Lance, Yasha into that Manta on the way. It's a pretty typical build. On to him. Yeah, very, very typical, typical build. Um, the Orchid's coming in very, very quickly here for Klinks. He'll have that in uh, another 30 seconds to a minute. Obviously, you want to start fighting as soon as you get that. Uh, that's when your power spike really starts to spike up there. I hear a sun strike somewhere. I think it's just more of a vision sun strike, if anything. Cancel. He's going to go for a blink after this dragon, man. So, oh, he wants to come. Terrorblade's in trouble, by the way. They just never onto him. He's the damn lock in at the ulti as well. That just takes down Terrorblade. Oh, so quickly, it felt like. And the team could not react in time. So, talk about the perfect target to find by himself. They do that now. Complexion needs to be careful not to overstay their, their welcome right here. He's Electra going to be put under. Get him out, we'll catch monkeys off to the side, out comes the ship, and down goes Leshrac. Shadow Fiend from a distance, they're somewhat spread up though, it's complexity. Hero play is going to be back up in 10 seconds, X marks the spot, brings back Cancel. A really follow up though, Misery couldn't get the torrent off. He's got another X soon. Oh, Dark uh, Rift away from Umi, and everybody's going to die! Oh, the fuck was oh. just behind him! Almost got him, Rock is going to be Cancel right there by the disruption. And we're still going on, out comes the dismember, there's that Rock Queen of Assault. And down goes Wade, down goes Misery. And Sock's not going to be the third to follow. Moo being here as well, helping big time. Complexity, a three for nothing exchange. At the end of that fight, at least. It's just not ready to take these full engagements. They're really close to that mech, and they really Dyer's desperately need it. Um, yeah, they just, uh, Invoker just wasn't able to be in the right place at the right time. Very, very good heads up their play from Complexity. That ultimate from Shadowfiend just does a lot of damage too, and he's able to channel it off. The Orchid came off onto the Orchid, uh, onto the Orchid, onto the uh, Voker at the right time. So even uh, if it didn't kill him initially, the extra damage would have. I didn't realize he had that going into that fight. I don't think DC would have as well, <laughs> the way that they were trying right. to make the fight happen. So yeah, the timing definitely there. and. That's uh, very big for complexity, obviously. Uh, you see Klink's out there. Shadow Fiend slightly ahead of him, probably expected, but Klink's right behind. They're both pretty far ahead of the Terrorblade. That third line. Who did they catch here? That's Pudge. Oh, that's a kill. That's a strike. A little bit of revenge, at least, but no complexity moving at the top lane, and here comes that level 4 Diabolic Edict. Yeah, and the Searing Arrows from... The Searing Arrows, but yeah, they're going to glyph and be fine. We is closing in on that Yules. Has it very, very... Shortly, about 600 gold. Radiance middle um, under attack. That's going to be really good against Clinks because he's hard to catch sometimes. If not Conqueror, right? there's not really anyone else that can catch him. Oh, Underlord, he does have the mech. It might be a good time for him to fight. Let's look at that AoE damage. Out comes a shift. Though Clinks will fall and Elish rack the target. He does go down. Yeah, between the mech, the aura, as well as the shift. There was no way that complexity was killing those guys. They had right there. Yeah, now they want to start fighting. They have the mech on the Underlord. Uh, he's actually not going to use that Shrine right there. He wants to maybe save it for someone else, but cancel. He's gonna, he actually didn't go for the Blink. He went for the Yasha instead. Still has that Blink queued up. That's what he went back for. What's Z Freak doing right here? He's got a Ghost Ship. Yeah. Does he want to maybe get some kind of kill up here? I'm not quite sure. Uh, Satyr's coming up here he's... with the Hell of a Dominator. Are you kidding me? <laughs> he's trying to go for a solo kill? No, he just, he knows that he can't cancel his TP, so. Okay. That was a little ambitious. And Rubik actually, speaking of supports that get Helmet Dominator, Rubik actually has a Helmet Dominator. I saw him run over there with that Purge Creep and Purge TP. I'm like, whose is that? Yeah. And lo and behold, it's Z-Freaks. That was, I, that's not your typical Rubik item, I feel like, but I guess with nobody else being a prime candidate for it on this team, they figure it makes sense to get it on him at least. 
uh, why not? Flesh rack. It's just so useful yep. for your team to have at least one. The, the attack speed aura, the, the HP aura, the good stats it pr provides, and of course the group get. It's just such a powerhouse item, so. It is. Totally yeah. warranted item pickup here for Z Freak. Flesh rack is working on that Urn of Shadows. He's level 10, so has the X5 life. Melons chose to get there. And uh, the mech, though, on Underlord, and now the Guardian Greaves is coming. Near future for him. Misery trying to finish his own Helm of the Dominator. Here. I guess nobody else has picked it up or is planning to pick it up, so. Yeah, it's going to be another case. Oh, it's hit. Oh, Underlord is in trouble. Dark Rift trying to get out of here. Monkeys getting maybe hook and kill. No, it's not going to hit even. And he does get away, but here comes more. The Sunstrike actually was early, I believe. Melon survived initially. But he does go down shortly after, and now Monkey's on the run. TP out, he'll be good. The loss was Lesrak, actually. Yeah, and the TP out from Moon. Radiance, he, know, he knew he could just regularly TP out there, so he can't by a plus of guns or what have you. But he TPs out, ended up being just fine. Able to evade the hook. I think even if the hook hit, he would have had enough life after the moment. Here we go, TP in with a stolen boat! Oh, that's a big combo right there. Meemaw just never in the background catches Misery locking him down. They do pick up Endalore. Down goes Tonka and El Soxa on the run. Disrupted up in five seconds. He's going to go for the quick TP. And he will be good, actually. The hook just a second late right there on catching him. Klinks is still chasing. Maybe to pick off this Terror Blade. Oh, they can see him, though, because of the sentry. But yeah, he's going to catch him right here. It's going to be enough damage for the kill. Has a strafe. Searing Edo. He's not. I'm really surprised. I, I think he easily could have killed him. He had his ult still know. active. He had Orchid up. He had Strafe. I'm very surprised he didn't at least try for it. Yeah. What's the worst that could happen? Anyway, uh, they still get a very, very positive engagement right there. They're taking a tier 2 after that. So they're taking objectives after kills, which is always good, obviously. But that Rubik, man, have stealing that. Oh, he's going to go and find a Shadow Demon. Prime candidate, but not going to kill him just in time. Now he's in trouble, actually. No, finds four staff right there. Oh, big hook on the socks! I mean, well, the angle from Monkey. That was not an easy angle. As he runs all the way up there and manages to snipe him out. And now the middle tower push, so. Overall well, complexity continuing with the momentum here. Hurricane Pike, by the way, finished on Shadow Fiend. Yeah, he's very, very large and in charge right now. It could have been very scary for Clinks, but was able to be fine. And yeah, like you said, very weird angle, but Monkey's able to find it. But he, he's really backing up. Uh, he talked the talk. He's starting to walk the walk right now. He is. Uh, it is fun to see, but not so fun for DC, as uh, it is hurting them now. Obviously, there's still plenty left in this game, but a Roshan kill and. Okay, cancel the one that picked it up, actually. I'm curious, what do you think about that? Uh, Shadow Fiend over Clinks for the uh, Aegis? It's fine because usually if Clinks dies, it's going to happen super fast. And you're not going to get any other spells out of him. But when Shadow Fiend dies, you're going to go out with Fang. You're going to be auto attacking, you're going to be raising, trying to get an ult off. And then, of course, when you finally die, you get your actual ult off. But um, yeah, I think this is fine. It's probably a better choice. Top tower push. Gonna be all five here. Leshrak again. No, he's not on the tower actually. Leshrak scouting out of the front lines. He does finish the urn to get that vision down though. But it doesn't seem like Digital Chaos is concerned about defending here up top. They're gonna let it fall, pretty much knowing that uh, maybe their team fight isn't as strong right now. And there we go. So, will they defend the siege? I assume so. I don't know if they can. They might try, but I don't know if they can. Tons of damage coming out from it. Tons of damage coming out oh. of everything. Hook coming out successful on the Wii. He's cast the spells. Here we go, Breaky. Requiem of Souls being activated. And not the closest Wii is caught, though. Wii's dead for 50 seconds. He does have a buyback. Will he use the question? X marks the spot, brings it back. The ship, it's not going to hit anyone. Z Freak stole a torn himself. Meanwhile, Cancel going toe to toe with Moomiator. He gets hooked back now. The Aegis will pop, though, in mid hook. So he's kind of at an awkward angle right here. Sunstrike going to be used immediately. But not really doing the most damage. They do pick up the tower, and again, that Diabolic Edict, the ulti activate of the Pulse Nova from Lesha. This is a support hero that can deal so much damage. Siege of base, and that's going to be a Rax destroyed in favor of Complexity. Melon, going to be pulled back in on top of the Ice Bath. He says, screw it, I'm dead, just leave me. Damage down. Look at the bottom lane, though. Terror Blade, that's why. He was split pushing. Now, Moo's here. I catch him with the Orchid, but another TP coming in from Wii. And enough to scare them off right oh, there. Oh, Freak! Oh, they actually got it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> actually got terribly. He came back a little sneaky Z-Freak. Links and gets it.
Fateful easy kill on the Terror Blade. Nicely done. Z Freak with a box score of 2 0 and 15, having a game, man. Wow. Stealing all the, all the right spells, all the right times. Still Ice Wall there at the end, too, as Invoker makes his exit. Moo trying to still chase him. In the meantime, Monkey does die, but DC, uh, we, one auto attack, two oh. auto attacks with market damage, he is dead. And a very, very nice find there for Moo. Good heads up play. I see it. His box score is 5 1 and 7. Great game so far from Complexity. Back out of there with the minimal losses, only the with the less track, and of course, subsequently the, uh, the I don't know how he really died, but they get a huge uh, win in that last engagement. Yeah, and Invoker did use a buyback to reiterate too, so he actually doesn't have a buyback now for the next 40 seconds here, and oh wow, for the next about five and a half minutes even, he will not have one. So that also pretty crucial. DC's chances now. Next five minutes. And the farm so. is just not there on the non cores of DC. And even on the cores, I mean, we typically haven't always just great games with the Invoker. It's very, very under farm. Same thing with TV, but you look at the supporting cast. I mean, the supports are on the bottom. Even uh, Moon Meander on his, on his Pit Lord almost has less farm than every single member of Complexity. Now, a little bit of that has to do with just the structural damage. And when you when you get Rax kills, you get a lot of gold. Actually, hold that thought. Move. Being chased around. There are sentries down. Yeah, they are here. They can they survive with Moo? No, yes, maybe. All oh, Splitter comes out. Moo's gonna be alive for the time being. He's looking to get his chance now. Rekum is also in the background. Moo Meander says, screw it. The Uber out. Can he make it happen? Yes, no, he what? cannot. He got pulled back, actually. Was that a Rubik X marks the spot? It absolutely was. He stole it. And he used it. The Z Freak Godlike Rubik continues. Gets the kill of the Shadow Demon. Kunkka gonna be able to dodge that hook right there at least, but the lift gonna make it. Nah, uh uh. You ain't going anywhere, bitch. They get the kill anyways with that lift of Rubik yet again. Buy back on a Shadow uh, Demon, that is. They know how important it is to hold right here. We're gonna do his best. The meatball comes out. That's a four staff on a monkey's right there. A little bit awkward. But Moo is still good to go. He's actually full life just about and nearly oh, full mana. Did he actually hit it? Oh my god, he did. The Desolator goes off and there's the kill. And we know buyback is complexion. He just done it. Gets Digital Chaos about to take game number two and finish in a split right here. Wow. All right, man. This guy is proven his worth on Pudge and maybe warrants abandoned future series. And all I thought was not over just yet. Kind of taking the last set of racks. Hook, unfortunately, onto an illusion. He just popped a man's shirt. Not to fade. Four staff in. Trying to go for disruption save here from Zoxa. Taking some damage. Cancel the doesn't carry. He's looking at all business here. Trying to hit those racks. Does fall. Unfortunately, most of his focus was on the melee rack, so that will be Janet. But the damage is done as another set of racks in the bottom lane falls. And I don't know whether to call Monkeys MVP or just the entire team of complexity, but they look so much better in this second game than the last game. And they didn't even look that bad last game. It, 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 something happened in the middle of that game where yeah. someone had some, some clutch RPs, but this game, they're just banging on all cylinders and seem to be all on the same page. Oh, Barry hit the play. But he managed to maybe mitigate a potential sun strike that <laughs> we just then canceled. And it didn't actually hit him, but if it did, it would have spread out among three units instead of one, saving his life. So very heads up play from cancel. Again, I can't stress it enough, but they're just banging on all cylinders, man. Yeah, they really are. It's obviously, it feels like there's definitely several reasons to it here for complexity success here at game number two. No doubt the hooks of uh, Fudge living up to the. The hype, but obviously Z Freak Rubik, I think, oh doubt he's had some clutch plays, including that last fight, the, the Xbox can spot the pullback, a couple of the ghost ship steals. What does he have now? He has a pit of malice actually, so another crowd control ability. Yeah, the cores of D DC on the other hand, Terra Blade, he, he just really has not been too threatening. I mean, 25 minutes in a Mantis style Dragon Lance is alright, but that really concerning for complexity. I mean with the split push, sure, but oh the hook just missing Underlord right there, meanwhile as uh, Pudge was attempting to make another big play. But yeah, Complexity going to go cut though right here, trying to really finish the game. Now, they do not have an Aegis or anything like that. Roshan should be up in the near future. They're not going to wait, though. They want to finish this game now, perhaps. And they're going to smoke up and go for an attempt. Obviously, that's fake right there. Let it run on by, see if anyone else pokes out a little bit. And the damage output now from Shadow Fiend with the extra two damage for Soul. He has the Ags, boosted Requiem, 46 extra Souls. That's 184 bonus damage. Oh, he's, he's in a good spot right now. He's feeling pretty confident. Hook attack coming out. <laughs> Successful on the Wii yet again. Or can he this? No buyback. Sasha's not in the right place. He actually already used the disruption, I think, on TV Loose or something. 
Muggy's just proving again and again that he could be drafted uh, this punch every single game. Oh my god, another kill. You see the buyback onto Underlord. Then another kill though for Cancel comes out. Meanwhile, the seat continues, and this absolutely could be it in favor of Complexity. The Requiem going off right there. You see the Ags effect as well from the Shadow Feed. Resolution sitting from a distance in the Metamorphosis. He is just simply trying to live and run back, but GG being called Complexity. Gonna take game number two and thus split the series with Digital Chaos. They, they gotta feel hyped about that, and again, definitely looking good. It's not like this was a fluke, in my opinion, at least. Was, uh, this was just solid play, some unique stuff going on, and and then there's the top of it. I mean, they got their Leshrac. I mean, not that Mel has over, took over the game by any means, but Leshrac right. is a comfortable.